Sometimes you can be riding down the road in a car, and, and sometimes you can be asleep at night and dream of birds, and you dream about songs in your sleigh. You'd be listening to a song or something on the radio, and songs all running through your head. Everybody has some kind of blues. If anyone blew about one thing, it's about another. You can get the blues from anything. Of course, the blues mean happiness to me. It really does. <laughs> yes, indeed, all the time. Good. <laughs> family for about 21 years now. I think that that accidental meeting in the filling station in Fairfax has altered the lives of both families in ways that neither one of us would have dreamed possible at the time. But I was coming back through Fairfax and I pulled into a filling station that I usually did not stop at and uh, got a tank of gas and I looked into the station and I saw this guy in there holding a guitar. And with my interest in traditional music and with musicians, I naturally walked in there, walked up to him and said something like, uh, do you play that thing? I said, no, I don't play nothing. He said, I know you must know one song. So he kept asking me, I played the Mississippi John Hurt's Candy Man. And he asked me before I learned it, and I told him off a 78 record. Told him that Mississippi John Hurt was still alive and was in fact playing in Washington, D.C., about 20 miles away. And I don't think John believed it. And I said, that man ain't living now, he probably pushing up tulips. I said, I've been playing that song for 25 or 30 years and said he wouldn't be living now. And then we took him down to the Ontario place. And of course, he was totally, you know, freaked out to see John Hurt, you know, and hear him in person playing Candyman that he had learned such a long time ago from this 1928 recording. <clears throat> so we did, we kind of uh, began slowly to take him to coffee houses. The, Ontario Place had him do a guest set or two, and then they would hire him on occasion uh, to perform. And uh, I heard that they were going to have Mance Lipscomb coming to um, the Ontario Place. And Mance Lipscomb, as a Texas songster, did much of the same kind of material uh, and the same kind of style of playing that John did. And I had thought the similarities were interesting, and I thought maybe John and, and Cora would get a kick out of hearing someone else that played uh, music that was similar to what John did. Uh, the people who ran the Ontario Place asked John if he would like to play a guest set, since he had been playing there off and on um, at these times we'd, we'd arranged. And uh, so he, he went ahead and he played a set, and Afterwards, Chris Strockwitz didn't jump up out of the audience and say, I want to record that man. But afterwards, he did. He came back in the back and he uh, talked to John and he said he would really like to make a recording of him, but he was only going to be in Washington for one more day and then he had to leave. 
And sure enough, the next day, he came out to the house with all these little boxes that looked like radios, and I played a bunch of songs for him. And then about six months later, the record came out. And he, uh, everybody else had eaten. John finished up uh, eating, and at that point, I handed him this record uh, encased in the envelope. And I told him that here was uh, somebody I wanted him to listen to. And uh, he said, who is it? Is it Blind Blake? And I said, well, he's not that good, but take a listen and see what you think. So John pulled the record out of the envelope, and his eyes got big as he saw the photograph on the front, and he said, that looks like me on there. And I said, well, it is you, John. It's a recording you made. And he really was, was overcome. His hand began to shake and, and, and tremble, and we took him into the house to play the recording. And we poured him a stout glass of uh, Virginia Gentleman bourbon. And he didn't sit down, couldn't sit down, I think. He leaned over the record player until every song on both sides of that recording had played. Did I love my baby? <laughs> and I've been traveling every night, huh? That's how it all happened. <laughs> Did I love my baby? Love all. He has about five records out now. And uh, he's also done a number of tours around the world. He's been to Europe at least twice, maybe three times now. He's been through uh, Central America and South America on tours. He's been to places like uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, and I think he did a concert in uh, Egypt. I could go with him sometimes, but if he drives, I'll ride. And if he catches a train, I ride. But if he fly, I don't fly. I don't. They asked me, is he here? I said, no, he ain't here. So they had to take me. Just leave. <laughs> That's right. That's that way I answer. You know. That's what you asked me for. Or you call this soul food. Because the people now, they date and time down here. They run to the store and just jump. Whatever you call that little old thing in the package, get it and throw it in the oven, and in 10 minutes you're licking it up. You see, I do all my cooking from scratch. I do. But that's the way they do now. They go get Swanson, you know, Donuts, and they throw them in the oven. And a little dab of this sitting in the corner of the, of the cardboard box, and a little dab of that in the corner of the cardboard box. I know you have seen them. Well, that's what it is. If nobody's been this, nobody's been this, nobody's been this but mine. If dumb the fruit got down the cone, nobody's been this. Back, you don't play anything but the harmonica, you fool with the banjo in the day. Say, young to go, brought the field. Running fast in the automobile, nobody's business but mine. If nobody's business, nobody's business, nobody's business but mine. Jay is fooling around with the guitar and banjo. Pretty much all of them play a song. slide here. This thing is, I call a slide, is a knife handle. You just pull the blade out and use the handle. <laughs> but before I got used this, I used to use a lemon drop bottle, lemon extract bottle. It used to be a man come around the uh, country where I live with a door-to-door -door salesman selling pie filling, lemon extract, and baking soda, flowers, just anything that you need for house water to cook with. And so when I lost that bottle, never could find another one, and then I got me a knife handle, and that's what I use now for my slough head. <laughs> so play you a little tune of John Henry Hay, huh? <laughs>
Say John Henry met his wife. His name was Polly Ann. Slap on that poor John Henry said, I won't be still driving man. I won't be still driving man. Say John Henry said to the captain, What I Mostly grave digging, and it's not a full day's work. I mean, the biggest thing you have to go out and dig it, and then go back the next day and fill it in. Every afternoon, just about, if he had no graves to dig, he would go out with friends uh, you know, digging Civil War relics. John's hobby is uh, collecting Civil War material or anything else he could find with a metal detector. And because there were a lot of battles around Fairfax and Manassas and in that area where he works, he's now accumulated, I don't know how many drawers and drawers and drawers full of various kinds of things. Oh, I'm off to find coins and mini balls and things like that. Sometimes a belt buckle, bayonet, just different stuff. I ain't found but two mini balls so far. <laughs> when I was growing up, and it was two furniture dealers from out of little town came there up in the country. Finally, they came back down to the house with these horses hooked to this wagon and had a record on this muted box. He called it playing, and my mother had it. She said, bring that thing on in here, bring that thing on in here. So when he brought it in and sold it to us, he would bring a bunch of records, seven, eight records, people like Blind Blake, Lemon Jeffers, the Bethel Smith, the old Jimmy Rogers, the Carter family. Just everybody was making records back by then. He had the records. And my sisters used to buy whatever they were able to buy, like 10 cents a piece a quarter piece, whatever they were selling them for. Huh? And so and I used to put a record on the record player and listen to it and tune my guitar down to it. If I didn't do that, I would cut me a rubber band out of an inner tube and take a pencil and put it on and call myself making a capo. And then I would cap it down to the same tune of the record and play right behind the record. And that's how I learned most of the play. Oh, everybody played something in the family, played music. Of course, I learned a few songs from my father and some spirituals from my mother. My father played guitar and banjo, mandolin, ukulele, and my mother played accordion, one of them things you stress now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. John, we old now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good friend of mine, John Jackson, here, and I'm Larry Johnson. And uh, John, it's good to see you. Always good, good to, to see you. you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm reminded right here now of uh, when we first met. I think it was in uh, 67, maybe. Yeah, uh, six, seven, six, eight, something like that. And that was uh, Barbara Carnes that got us together up in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I must say, over the years, you have been one of the men that I have met that has really inspired me to keep on going. And uh, and I just like to say, I'm just glad to know you. 
Well, I'm real glad to know you. Yeah, every time I see you, it just, it just refreshes my mind. You get that time memory. that me and you and Leon Redbone, you know, Leon Redbone, played yeah. all night long in Toronto, Canada, in the hotel room. Yeah, and yeah, we, we had we everybody had, in there with us. You saw even the tellers in the hotel and all yeah. the management came. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you were the second man that I had met, uh, excuse me, Rev. Davis, that played okay. the style that I love so well. Yes, indeed. I, I, I just, I just, uh, I can't find words to say how glad I am to know you. You know. Thank yeah. <laughs> you work on them some now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a wonderful gift. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I had everybody around here in New York had one given to them but me, and then finally they gave me one. <laughs> I say, well, thank you for the blessing there, you know. Yes, indeed, and they call it a G. But uh, this one I intend, I can't pawn this one. Yeah. I think I'll keep this one. Yeah. <laughs> You know, speaking of Rev. Davis, one of my favorites about him. You ever hear him play when the uh, hit angel sing? I'm pretty sure of that, but I like to hear you do it. I just hear the words that way. Can't you hear? Charlie Stone is a man that makes his living playing the slide trombone. We call him Charlie Stone. Well, now I know a fool. He come from way down south. Call him Charlie Stone. Well, now he makes his living going around town. You see, blowing on the slide trombone. Now he can make it moan and he can make it sing. Tell me where did he get that thing? Go ahead, Stone. Blowing on I think, I think I played that one when, when we met. Yeah, we did. That, that, that's one you always did like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. One of my favorites. Uh -huh. I'm going to do that tonight. Huh? All right, now. <laughs> I ain't got no, no They tell me, John, that it was made that they were going to sell them, uh -huh. but it cost so much to make it. To make it. Uh -huh. So they just made this one. This this was like a this was the guinea pig. You see, they say they wind up in my hand. So they decided. Well, I this know it's a company over in California. Make one looks very much like that. If they call yeah. a letter. Well, they call this a G. Mm -hmm. Like G, what a good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know one thing. I, I was glad to get it. I was really glad to get it. Yeah. It was a wonderful gift. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. John, you remember we used to? Did you ever play the Gaslight? What? Uh, oh, Sam, Sam Hood. You remember? Yeah, I remember yeah. that place. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, John Hurt. Yeah, Mississippi John. At Hurt. that time, I was Skip James. Skip James. Son Hurt. Yeah. 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 I met all of them. 
But now, at, at that time now, I, I was like taking Ralph Davis around, you know? Yeah. And I wasn't really playing, but but as I look back on it now, it was good for me to be there. Yeah. It was good for me to be there, yeah. They did Gaslight Cafe at Go-Go, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, what was the Purple Onion? Yeah. yeah. I remember one time when the Reverend came down to Philadelphia. Yeah, David, it's been David. a long time, back in the very early 60s. Uh, yeah. And uh, he come on the stage, mm -hmm. And he walked up on the stairs and he says, I come here to do what the Lord told me to do, he said. Yeah, he's very And he had a guitar in his hand and he got up by him and he's coming to prison and he never let a lick on that guitar. <laughs> and he just kept telling him, said, I come here to do what the Lord yeah. told me to do. Yeah. And he preached the whole sermon right there on the stage. He really mm -hmm. did. I, Never mm -hmm. played the first song. He can preach them. Man, he could. Uh, I got a tape of him preaching. Uh, it was made in 62 in church. Yeah. I went to church with him one Sunday and I taped it. And he he, he, he really could preach. Yeah. He was serious about that. See you here in New York, you know, you're in my turf now, you see. <laughs> yeah. But, but you're more than welcome. I'm glad to have you. Well, thank you. And, I'm and really when glad I, to be here. I didn't even know you were here, and I saw your name in the paper, and I just tore the paper out and come running down here to the church. <laughs> and I tell you, this church here is where, is where the folk scene in New York began some 20 years ago that I was playing here. And uh, it's just like it's a big historical event to be here with you once again. Well, thank you, man. And the uh, welcome to New York. You few, thank yeah. you, man. The city that never sleeps. <laughs> play whatever strikes me. I'm not able to write a program and whatever gets up far oh, it generally comes out. <laughs> Start of one and end up on something else, yeah, huh? <laughs> Got one black cat, 
you, I'll be traveling all over the United States for the rest of this year. I'm booked everywhere to where I am. I'm in Canada. And, oh, that's good. Yeah, and I have Birkins like in uh, Carolina, some in Georgia. I have a lot in Virginia, Western Virginia, Maryland. And uh, some in Pennsylvania, just different places. Uh -huh. I just enjoy it real much, yeah. Hey, woman, hey, gal, you had me coming, yeah. She's so sweet, she's so sweet. music, blues, and old time music, just a little bit of everything. <laughs> Most American music, a lot of Irish music, and, you know, and what we call mountain hold downs and folk music. And, uh -huh. <laughs> started right now with a man who has been playing guitar for about 50 years. He has, I would say that he has perfected the East Coast style of picking blues guitar. And he started out playing at uh, house parties in his native state of Virginia. He still lives in Fairfax, Virginia. And has gone, and has gone on to uh, travel all around the world recently. So please give a big hand to John Jackson.